So again, we're uh, welcoming Audrey um, Ansel from the Municipality of Chatham-Kent, Director of Community Attraction and Promotion. And uh, Audrey, we're going to give this a try. I'm going to stick with you for a minute or two and see if we can get your share screen. And Okay. okay, good afternoon, everybody, and apologies for the delay there. Excited very much to be here. Jennifer invited me to come along today. She said, you have about 20 minutes, so I think we've just used about 16 of them, so I'll be really quick. <laughs> so, um, as Brett introduced there, I'm Audrey Ansel, Director of Community Attraction Promotion, and I was looking back over the past few days as to when I last came and spoke with Rotary, and it was January 2014 was the last time I was here in the um, Rotary Lounge at the Capitol Theatre. And at the time, we were talking about population and what was happening, because if you cast your minds back, Chatham Kent's population was on the downward trend at that point. So today's conversation, um, it's really a struggle to fit everything into those 20 minutes, because I could probably fill your agenda for the rest of the year with all the components of the work that happens. So I'll try and do justice today in terms of some of the work that's been happening. So let's see if I can move forward here. So, bonjour, hello, bonjour. Um, welcome to uh, my presentation today. Um, so I work in community traction promotion at the municipality. And when I first started in the work, council, three councils ago had recognized that immigration and youth retention were the two big issues of the day that they wanted to figure out what we would do with as a community. So over the years, the area itself has evolved and changed. There are a number of components, but essentially the work involves promoting and attract um, and supporting Chatham Kent um, to attract and retain visitors, residents and talent. So we chat a little bit today about some of that. Um, so in terms of some of the um, names that you might recognize in terms of connected to the work that we do, um, Living CK or Living Chatham Kent is a big um, focus for our resident attraction and retention efforts. And within that, perhaps things like Back to Chatham Kent will be familiar to some of you, that initiative around young people. CK to the power of Y, which is our youth retention group and how we connect with our young people in the community. Our local immigration partnership is also in, in the portfolio there. Um, in recent years, the Chatham Kent Workforce Planning Board has come into the portfolio. Um, the Chatham Community Leaders Cabinet is also um, part of the portfolio. So that's kind of all those pieces. And then on the tourism side of things, so you'll perhaps be familiar with Visit CK, so Visit Chatham Kent, that's Chatham Kent Tourism. And that's the work that we do to promote the community to encourage visitors to come here. And in recent years, we have used the CU and CK branding. So encouraging people to A, get out and enjoy their community, um, which has obviously been you know, um, thrust upon us by COVID and not being able to travel, um, but also so um, now we're starting to promote uh, more of Chatham County outside the community. Um, in terms of how it all fits municipally, we have our CK plan 2035, which is really our, our corporate and our community strategic plan. Key focus areas in there that we would fit into would be economic prosperity. So how we build our workforce, how we ensure that businesses have talent and the workforce that they need, uh, but also people and culture. So how we encourage people to come to the community and once they actually get here, how do we keep them that is the bigger challenge sometimes in, in, in our work. Um, but tied in with all of that is building um, diversity, building vibrancy in our community, making it a welcoming community, encouraging people from all walks of life to find um, a home in Chatham Kent. Um, so what you can see on the screen now is a really kind of a, I think it's things that we all know to be true. They're statements of fact about Chatham Kent. Um, and we've used them, you've used them yourself for years in terms of promoting the community. So when I would have last come and spoke with you, these were the kind of snippets of things that you would speak to people about or tell them about the community. You know, we're located between Lake Erie and um, Lake St. Clair. We're in a geographic sweet spot. It's a, an hour to Detroit, it's an hour to Windsor and London and Sarnia. It's two, two and a half hours to the GTA. We'd also speak about, you know, our workforce generally enjoys about a 15 minute commute to work. So if you tell that to folks, some folks outside the community living in larger cities, that is just like dream time. Um, and obviously we speak about the size of the community, the, the population density, which as you know, is quite low. Um, we speak of course about the weather, 22 snow days in Chatham Kent on average, you know, compares very favorably elsewhere and we're in the banana belt. So that sunshine piece really appeals to 
retirees, people moving from other countries, you know, those pieces. So we kind of joke about, we don't just have a great lake, we have a really great community. And great communities to visit are also great communities to live in and to work in. Um, a lot of the work we do, of course, is about, I would argue, um, encouraging people to decide where they're going to invest their most valuable assets. And it's not money, it's their family, their lives, where they're going to work, where they're going to relocate their families to. So really, really valuable assets, sometimes intangible, you can't quantify the quality of those, but you know that they're the most important things in your life. So it's not always just about the money, it's about the feeling that people get when they come to the community and then whether they stay. Um, so as I said, the last time I was here, Chatham Kent's population was declining. So the kind of teal blue kind of box there, in 2011, our population had uh, declined 4.2%. Um, and by the time, well, when I was speaking to you then, I think probably word for word have said the mission is to stem the rate of population decline. I think it would have been really, really optimistic at that point in time to say, hey, we want to grow our population. We were just trying to stem the rot. So I'll speak with you a little bit about some of the things that we did to help with that. By the time the 2016 census came around, the rate of decline had slowed just to over 1.95%. Still declining, but the rate by the, the sort of attrition rate had declined. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we had our 2021 census, and I hope at this point you've all seen that the population has actually started to increase in, uh, in Chatham-Kent. I don't think you need data, though, to tell you that. I think you just need to look around and see what's happening in our community um, to recognize that. So 2.2% increase back over 104,000. If we look at some projections, though, for from Stats Canada for our community, um, there's a potential that obviously it's, it's trending higher than that, too. Um, but certainly forecasts out to 2030 and beyond show continued growth in the community. Um, so the Back to Chatham Kent was launched in 2012. We did our first Chatham Kent survey of young people. We discovered that, um, or we clarified that not all young people hated Chatham Kent. They didn't all want to get out. You know, if I had a dollar for every time people said that to me, that wasn't the case because we have discovered in that in the 2012 survey, and another one in 2016, we learned from our young people. Um, high percentages, high 80s percent, and maybe even getting into the 90 percent of, no matter where they go and what they do, they want to remain connected to the community. So that was the, when we learned that in 2012, I think it was kind of that magic sauce. That was like, okay, we may not always have jobs for everyone here. We may not offer the lifestyle that every, all our young people want but there's something about the DNA in the community of where you grow up and where these young people are growing up that connects them to them, that binds it to the community. So we kind of felt that while we may not have had the early days have lots of jobs for them to come back to, at least we could start to build relationships with young people and shine a light on the stories of people who had chosen to come back to the community. Um, so we targeted the, we surveyed the 15 to 39 year age group but our marketing efforts around back targeted the 25 to 35 year age group on the basis of that's kind of age because when you started thinking about decisions, will I buy a house? Where will I settle down? Maybe you have children. All of those pieces were kind of coming into the mix. That slide's gonna be really difficult to see, but suffice to say that in the 2011 census, that 15 to 39 year age group is the population there was declining about 10%. Um, by the 2016 census, the rate again had declined this slow, but the 30 to 34 year age group in the 2016 census had actually started to increase. There's a, nearly a five and a half percent increase. So that was people who were recognizing the opportunity in the community and were deciding to, to come back to the community. Um, we won't have that age breakdown data from the latest census until the end of April, but projections from Stats Canada in 2020 have shown that that 15 to 39 year age group is actually growing quite strongly now and is probably potentially close to 9% with you know, different variations in age cohorts. Um, so I know certainly in terms of the conversations we have with people, we're definitely seeing young people coming back, more families coming back here, um, entrepreneurial opportunities, they're identifying work from home, all of those pieces. So that's one bit. In 2016, so since I was last year, um, Canada, we were recognized as uh, Canada's first welcoming community. 
So that was uh, bestowed upon us by the federal government, so Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. And it was related to our community's ability to welcome and settle um, immigrants and specifically Syrian immigrants. So we had an approved community partnership settlement plan uh, with the work of our local immigration partnership of 40 community members. Um, we submitted an application and became Canada's first welcoming community. So since then, I think again, you'll see in our community the changing diversity in our community. Um, the welcome that we've seen for refugees, for people from all sorts of different backgrounds arriving in our community. Um, more recently, Chatham Kent was selected as one of three, only three sites in the province for an Ontario immigrant nominee program pilot. And that was aimed at ensuring that, um, or basically a way of offering immigrants a pathway to permanent residency. So if you had a full and permanent job in Chatham Kent, with your employer's support, you could apply for permanent residency. So the program just closed in December. We're waiting on confirmation for final numbers, but ultimately it has been a fantastic, um, it was a two-year pilot, delayed a little bit because of COVID, but it has been a fantastic retention tool for employers um, because they have been able to keep immigrants who are on their workforce who couldn't necessarily stay permanently in the community. That in itself would be a 20-minute discussion and they could happily fill you with at some point. Um, part of our, our storytelling as well is People need to see themselves in the community. We need to do really authentic storytelling. And again, I think if I had a dollar for every time going back several years that I would have said at trade shows or talking to people on the phone, if you want the bright lights in the big city, this is probably not where you need to be. Um, but if you want a great community, if you want people who are salt of the earth and do absolutely anything to help you, this is where you need to be as um, and living. So those kind of new resident testimonials and testimonials, of course, of young people who've chosen to come back were all really, really important tools that we used um, to tell the story. And I think it's not us doing the work. It's just us kind of maybe being a conduit to some of the work. It's the community stories. We're just shining a light on them and feeding those stories back to the community um, and about them. Um, another big piece again about the being authentic and showcasing people in the community is celebrating who's here. The ethno-cultural diversity, um, the, the community groups for people of all walks of life and all persuasions and all interest pieces, they are all part of uh, what we're celebrating and connecting here. And a lot of our work in community attraction promotion on the resident attraction side is certainly focused on connecting people in with ethnocultural groups, faith-based groups, volunteering opportunities in the community. And sometimes we might help somebody arrive in Chatham Kent. We might not hear from them for two or, two, two or three years. And then suddenly you might get an email or a phone call or they'll reach out via social media to ask about, is there, is there pick-up hockey? Or I'm interested in volunteering and doing something. So they're kind of long, slow burning relationships um, but I think it has been helpful for new community members to know that there's somebody that they can always reach out to and connect with for those things that you may not always ask your employer about, as an example. Um, just quickly going to show through here some of the imagery we used. A lot of our work in terms of promoting community, you don't see because it's happening outside the community. The mission has been to get new residents to come here and take note of it. I kind of feel like, and I was thinking about this on the way down, is in, two, in January 2015, and I remember the day well because I was heading to Windsor on a, in a snowstorm to do my, get my, do my oath of citizenship. And the Globe and Mail released an article about Chatham Kent being a retirement hotspot. Within months, we started the calls coming, the interest, realtors were kind of going to have more brochures, we need more information. Um, and that to me was kind of that turning point because then within a year we were starting to see that population changing. Um, but what we had noticed in terms of who was contacting us was, because the, the, the sense was that it was people looking to retire, but we were certainly noticing that a lot of young people were contacting us as well. Coming back, they had family here, they had lived here at some point, um, the spouse had got a job and they were kind of, you know, coming back. So this, nevertheless, is kind of that authentic advertising is out in Shrewsbury. Um, so the, the water essence of who we are here as a community, our proximity to it, so being very authentic, and the storytelling around about, you know, sort of work to water in, in 20 minutes, if that's, you know, what your interest is. 
Um, an opportunity that we embraced at the start of COVID quite early on within the first three or four months was a remote working promotion of Chatham Kent. Um, so we launched a Work Anywhere Live CK campaign in markets outside the community. Um, we backed that up. It was primarily on social media, it's typically the, one of the cheaper ways to reach broader audiences outside our community. Um, but we were very targeted in certain age groups and certain geographic areas. Uh, and certainly since then, um, well, I can't give hard metrics as to who came because of those campaigns. I know certainly that we've received quite a number of inquiries and calls about people about where's the best broadband in your community? Are there co-working spaces, right? I'm, I'm going to relocate and be able to work from home. So we're definitely seeing a lot of that coming through now. Um, oftentimes though, it's really helpful when somebody else shines a light on the community and we know it's great and we can speak to a blue in the face, but somebody else is kind of third party endorsement. So last year, McLean's ranked Chatham Kent 27th of best communities in Canada on the basis of our um, um, healthcare, recreation facilities, um, internet access was another piece that they ranked us on. So again, that kind of third party endorsement and we're now seeing some employers are actually using that in their job ads to actually promote the community. Um, Chatham Kent since 2016 has consistently been in Newhall's um, top 25 growth cities rankings and featured as 13th last year. So basically it's more U-Haul trucks are coming in than are leaving, you know, with people. So it suggests that people are arriving and staying in Chatham Kent. And then the last piece, I guess, here would be in 2018, we were ranked. So to even be ranked, even to appear, never mind the fact we were 67, but to appear on a list of millennial hotspots was kind of the the man I suppose from heaven, that kind of thing that we were really aspiring for, right? Or we are a great, great community for young people. And here it was, that ranking there. And the images that you can see here, these are all the images that we use to promote our community, whether it be social media and presentations, those pieces. Uh, the tourism side of things very quickly, as I said, a great community to visit is often a great place to live and, and vice versa. So our Tourism work is very much focused on helping our tourism operators. I think we've all agreed that it has been a really, really, really tough two years for our tourism operators. Um, so of late, certainly our focus has been on supporting them and helping them access grants and helping them develop new tourism offerings, new tourism experiences. And then we showcase all of that information on our Visit CK website, um, trip itineraries, videos, great things to do. This particular ad that you can see here was designed to showcase grab, during COVID, grab a picnic, take takeout from one of our restaurants, go to our, something on our bakery trail and go and enjoy one of the spots in the community. So we've had a, a lot of interest in that. And um, in our tourism work as well, we help businesses develop new tourism experiences because you, when you know when you go to visit a community, your memories are about things that you touched or felt or smell or people that you re interacted with. And TJ Stables, developed an indigenous center. If you haven't had the opportunity to invite Terry here to speak, and I don't know if you have, if you hadn't had their opportunity to go down to TJ Stables, if you haven't had the opportunity to stand outside TJ Stables and see those spirit horses, I will bet money that you will be moved by what you experience down there with those horses. So an indigenous um, an offering, tourism offering, um, endorsed and supported by Indigenous Tourism Ontario. So obviously being very respectful of, of what we're actually um, helping the business there to, excuse me, to offer. And then the last little bit, that kind of great place to work. Um, back in 2018, 2019, employers were starting to raise their head and saying, we can't find workers. We can't find talent in the community. There's not enough unemployment was declining. So we developed a, um, talent attraction and uh, retention strategy. And parts of that were true to the work we were already doing, promoting Chatham Kent online, doing community orientations, helping people connect in the community. Um, but also obviously based off the research and data, which is where the Workforce Planning Board and the information that comes in there. And that itself is a whole other 20 minute speech or more um, about what happens there but developing that strategy, looking about how we can actually assist employers. And the framework itself has been used to help address some of the um, issues in our early childhood education sector um, and in other sectors too. So the last little piece I'd like to mention today is 
next to that employment piece, because obviously employment is often a driver of a decision as to why you come to a community. Um, and in end of November, we launched ChannonKentJobs.com, which is a basically a consolidator and aggregator of job boards, up to 40 different job board postings in our community. So it's basically a one-stop shop for finding information about all the jobs that are available in Chatham Kent. So as of this morning, I think over you know 693 jobs available in the community. Uh, we're still working on tidying up some of those postings because some of them are appearing as duplicates, but nevertheless, it kind of gives an indication that there are a lot of jobs going on filled in the community. And on that website, you can actually go and look at a job demand report. So what employers are looking for, um, where in Chatham Kent they're looking for those jobs, the, the skills that they're looking for as employers, but you can also find a job search report, which does the same for people who are looking for work. Where are they looking from Chatham Kent from? What types of jobs are they looking from from community? So as I say, we only launched that in November, just building up the data and the information from that. So, you know, two or three months is really not a whole lot to go on at this point. But I was thinking that at this time next year, we're gonna have a really enhanced picture of what's actually happening employment and job-wise in our community. Um, so that was it, Migridge. Thank you, merci beaucoup. Yeah. Do you have any uh, questions? And I'll just uh, stop sharing and see if we've got anybody. I'm sorry, that's really annoying. I got I'll three kids sharing. from home. That's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, so in my time at the municipality, I started in December 2011. I think I have sat in seven or eight different desks in different departments. So I've been all over the place. I know everybody very well. Um, so for the longest time, I was in community development. Um, so economic development was in there. We got, um, at the time, planning was in there, a few different bits and pieces. Then I moved out into community human services. Um, so again, that people focus. And last, no, November 2020, I moved back to community development. So I am um, in an area that's focused on how we develop and grow our community. I would say develop and grow sustainably would be a, an important focus of the work that we're doing. Um, so in there is planning, is building, is economic development, and is community attraction and promotion. So as a collective working together, because everything is overlapping, intertwined, intersected in that work. Good question, thank you. Andy? Yeah, could you give us some idea on the, on the health front? One of the, when people come and move, want to move to this community, one of the first questions they have is, how long do I have to line up to find a doctor? I kind of, how do we, I, I know that we, no one is leaving, but how do we compare with other communities? Right, so <clears throat> you're, you're right, it is one of the earlier questions for some demographics and some age groups that would be top of their list. So municipal council, um, healthcare operators in the community recognize that it is a big issue. We don't simply don't have enough family physicians in our community. So over the past three or four years, we've seen more of the um, walk-in clinics, those kind of pieces, which are good for some of those basic frontline issues, but for that long-term chronic care, you know, support, we definitely need more family physicians. So council in support of this is actually providing funding. And there is a family physician recruitment and retention task force currently operational that consists of all the family health teams, the health alliances in there, the local health immigration network, ourselves for community attraction promotion. So collectively working to figure out how we can and actively encourage more physicians to come here and stay here. And as an example of part of that work last year, we know that a lot of our young people actually go overseas to study medicine. So we did some outreach in Ireland, um, which was an easy one for me. I didn't get to go there, but certainly by phone. Um, and we did some presentations to the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland to encourage our, some of our young people, but also other Canadian students who are interested in rural practice to consider coming to Chatham Kent and we're understanding that there has been some interest in some of those considering the community um, as a starting point for sure. So it's a complex piece. It doesn't have a easy solution, an easy fix, but I definitely that group is really committed to, to working to address those problems. 
Any other questions, Tom? I'm curious, uh, what would your thoughts be in terms of what organizations or others could do to assist the success in attracting, maintaining, and improving population size and diversity? That's a great question, Tom. So over the years, we have been connected with the Rotary students. So when they're outbound, we're giving them information on John Ken, the inbound ones, you know, kind of learning about the community. So in terms of you as a collective, I think as, as residents in our community, my area is eight or nine people municipally. We need 104,000 people being welcoming, right? Being open to new people, saying hello, welcoming people to the community, going the, just that little extra step. So I think that will be a huge piece um, and connecting people in the community. Um, I remember personally when I moved here 14 years ago, I didn't know where the post office was. I didn't know where you went with dry cleaning. It's really simple stuff, right? That people don't know, right? You don't know in the community. Um, so it's always nice to have that recommendation from somebody to say, oh, you should try here. So I think that kind of piece, I, to this day, I'm still mesmerized by the amount of times that, you know, you're doing your grocery shopping in the, this community and you're finished with your cart and somebody comes along and says, well, I take that back for you. That blows my mind. Like that wouldn't happen where I'm from. It just wouldn't happen every man for himself kind of thing. Um, so I think that speaks to the nature of this community. So if you can add to that, do more of it. Um, think about what it's like to be in someone else's shoes where they're not familiar with the community. And, you know, they don't have to look different to you. They don't have to be from a different ethnocultural background. Anybody who's new to the community might struggle with, you know, figuring out where things are and how you get things done around you. Thanks, Tom. Any other questions? No? Well, thank you very much, Audrey. We really appreciate you taking your time. And I think all of us know our community is pretty special. And uh, this just helps to, uh, to show it to us. So thank okay. you very thank much. Thank you very much. So just a couple of announcements uh, as we're moving forward. Uh, we had a very short visit from Barry Fraser before the meeting started. He's off once again to, uh, I think it's Red Lake, uh, severely north. The problem is the last time he did that COVID hit and we got shut down and he got stuck up there for about uh, six or eight weeks longer than what he was planning. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen again but we wish, wish Barry a, a, a good travel. In the meantime, Barry was selected by the Lower Thames Conservation Authority as a volunteer hero. So, you know, he didn't toot his own horn, but, uh, you know, we know that uh, he um, has done so much for our Rotary Eco Trail, which uh, many of us walk and uh, quite enjoy it. Uh, it's a little on the soggy side, but not too bad right now. And he also uh, spearheaded uh, part of our fall cleanup project uh, that we did along with uh, the Lower Thames and uh, Chatham Sunrise. So uh, congratulations to, uh, to Barry on that. Uh, our upcoming meetings next week, uh, we've got Bruce Ross. We've actually got him available kind of two dates. He will be at Turns and Tails on the 12th from two o'clock to four o'clock he'll be uh, doing his book signing. So if anybody wants to pick up a book in the neighborhood of $26, $28, something like that, uh, Bruce will be there to sign it. Uh, his book is uh, um, Breaking Free of Depression's Grip. So um, very happy for him. Uh, Bruce and I met through Rotary and uh, he did a great job for us, uh, helping get us uh, back on track. And then he left town, I'm afraid. So, uh, but he will be our speaker next week and we're really looking forward to having him. Uh, he is now a member of the Rotary Club of Meaford because he did get so much out of our Rotary Club. He has not told them up there that he has anything to do with accounting. So he's keeping himself on the slow, quiet side for the time being. Uh, the week after that, we're going to jump into something that's really coming on strong both within our district and our municipality is doing quite well um, coming on with this. Uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice. So Rebecca Haskell, Thomas, and Amrit, I missed Amrit's last name. 
um, I couldn't find it on my emails. <laughs> so they're going to be here. And then the week following, we'll have uh, Chris and uh, Amy Prince. And Chris was a uh, former member. If any of you are like me, I uh, love to watch Still Standing, a uh, Canadian TV show. And Chris stars on that every week. His picture flops up for about a quarter of a second. So uh, his claim to fame, I'm sure. So uh, thank you all for attending and uh, we've got a board meeting coming up uh, Monday night and uh, wish you all the best. Take care.